Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If I could get a sound check, if anyone would like to let me know if you can hear me okay before I continue, I'd appreciate that. Hopefully everyone had a wonderful Monday. Sound check, sound check. If you can hear my voice, please type something in the chat box and hit enter. So the right hand side of the screen. Might be having some issues with the chat box at the moment. We'll see if we can get that resolved as we go forward. But as it shows, from what I can see, my sound is actively transmitting. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. So welcome back, guys. Happy Monday. Hopefully everyone had a good day in the markets today. Today we're going to be discussing trend lines. We're going to be covering trend lines in today's webinar. We're going to naturally have to go through our disclaimers to begin with, of course. And after that, we will be on to the good stuff. So starting off, guys, we're going to go ahead and throw some disclaimers on screen. I'll read through the first one, and then the next next uh, few thereafter, I'll just leave them on screen for a period of time. You can screenshot them, read through them, do what it is, whatever it is you need to do uh, to feel that you can actively read through all that information. I'll try to get through them quickly. All right, guys, starting off with the very first disclaimer, like I said, I'll read through this one, but the next few I'll just hold on screen for a little bit. So if you'd like to keep them or save them, please take a screenshot of them. But as we get going here, guys, uh, it is important to understand that earned to trade is provided to you for educational purposes only. Earned to trade is not a financial services company. Earned to trade does not accept any liability for loss or damage as a result of reliance on the information contained herein. This includes educational material, price quotes, and charts and analysis. Please be aware of the risks associated with trading. The financial markets never invest more money than you can risk losing. The risks involved in trading are high and may not be suitable for all investors. Earn to Trade doesn't retain responsibility for any trading losses you might face as a result of using the data shown on its websites or webinars. The data and quotes contained may not be provided by exchanges, but rather by market makers. So prices may be different from exchange prices and may not be accurate in real-time trading prices. Any examples used are not a recommendation to buy or sell or a solicitation to buy or sell futures, options, bonds, or binaries, or securities of any kind. The information and strategies and techniques, techniques discussed herein are the property of Earn to Trade LLC. They may not be shared or distributed to another party without the express written consent of Earn to Trade LLC. Any trademarks or copyrights referenced other than Earn to Trade are the property of the respected holders and not Earn to Trade LLC. Next, guys, we're going to go ahead and switch to a couple more disclaimers. Please take a moment to read through them yourself.
Abdul says hello. Hello, Abdul. Hopefully you can hear my voice okay. Switching on to the next disclaimer, folks. Good, good, wonderful. If you're just joining us now, guys, we are just going through our required disclaimers before we continue. Not too many more to go here, and we'll be on our way. All right, moving along. It depends on how many questions are asked, Abdul, but um, we'll be we'll be aiming somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 45 minutes, give or take. Like I said, depends on the questions that are asked and, and uh, how we feel about things as we go forward. I'm just going to feel it out. Moving along. This is our final disclaimer, folks, and then, like I said, we will begin the good stuff. All right. So getting ourselves started off, as I said earlier, those of you that were in the waiting room or in the room, uh, you know, a few minutes early, you already heard this. But those of you that weren't, you know, here you go. Here's your chance to catch up. Today we're going to be discussing trend lines. We're going to be covering trend lines. I'm going to be talking about trend lines and hopefully, hopefully answering uh, any questions that you might have about them. Uh, if you haven't gone through any of our other our, our, our other webinars or other um, lessons that we have out there already available to you, uh, we've covered support and resistance rather recently, and I feel that is a very important one to understand before moving on to trend lines as they are hand in hand. But next, guys, we're going to go ahead and talk about. Well, I'm going to be essentially what's going to go on, guys, is I will be switching. If you're new here, I will be switching to live charts and I will be going through my charts backwards, forwards, finding examples in front of you guys in real time uh, of exactly what we're talking about to hopefully make it a little bit easier to understand uh, and possibly uh, make the learning curve a little bit less steep. As with all things, you know, the knowledge is power in the trading world, and as such, we don't want to overlook something. Some of you might be thinking, oh, trend lines. Uh, you know, I, I kind of know what that is already, but I, I don't really want to give it too much thought because I don't think it's, you know, it's not the end all be all. It's not what I want. Um, but really, it is one of the most, one of the most, it, it's one of the most fundamental um, aspects of technical analysis trading. But first off, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, I am a trader and mentor at Earn to Trade. My name is Chris. Uh, I run generally the vast majority of all of these webinars as well as the daily recaps and and what have you. I am a trader myself as well, if I did not say that already. But the goal of this webinar is quite simple. We want to continue expanding our knowledge on trading and learn about trend lines on live charts while we show you how to find these areas in real time. After the webinar, you should be able to begin finding these areas on your personal charts by yourself quickly and easily. You should be able to use these levels throughout the day or at least be able to watch them and see how they perform. As with anything, practice makes perfect, and the more you practice and the more you uh, immerse yourself in the usage of anything new that you're learning in the trading world, the better off you're going to be. So we strongly recommend practicing, practicing, practicing before ever taking any potential strategies live. Next, let's go ahead and switch. Let's go ahead and switch over to uh, to my charts now. Let's get that out of the way so I don't have to bumble around with that. One second, and there we are. Should have a nice, beautiful view of my charts at the moment, which are currently very clean. Don't have anything else on them, and that's how I'd like to keep them. But 
So what is, let's start off, you know, we're going to start off with the basics. And obviously, guys, as I go along, if you have any questions, if you have anything that pops up at, you know, that you feel that you might forget uh, a little bit later on as we keep moving through things, don't hesitate to, to interrupt me. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Ask the question when you feel the right time to ask the question. Is. If I say something and it doesn't make sense, or maybe I say something a little bit too fast, or... Uh, maybe I bumble my words and it's just not quite clear what I'm saying. Don't hesitate to ask me to repeat something. Don't hesitate to ask me to clarify something or possibly show you another example of what we're talking about. I, I want this to be as personable as possible. I want you to be able to communicate with me as I communicate with you. So don't don't uh, don't worry about that. Alrighty here. So, by definition, a trend line is simply a line drawn over pivot highs or under pivot lows to show the prevailing direction of price. Okay. Now, those of you that are familiar with support and resistance already, you can simply think of a trend line as nothing more than an area, uh, a diagonal, I, there we go, bubbling my words, a diagonal area of support or resistance. It's an area that essentially price has reached and turned around at. And where have we heard those words before, aside from support and resistance? Very, very similar in that sense. So we we can treat, uh, I'm sorry, we can treat a, a trend line just like a horizontal area of support or resistance, like I was saying, just going back to my notes here, so I don't sound like such a bobo here. Uh, so like support, a trend line encompassing the bottom area of where price is trading can also be thought of as a demand zone. And just like resistance, a trend line encompassing the top area of where price is trading can also be thought of as a supply zone. So just like support and resistance, like I said, a lot of the principles that apply to those horizontal areas of support and resistance that we were just talking about very recently are going to treat you very well in understanding trend line as, once again, a very simplistic way to think of what a trend line is, is nothing more than a diagonal area of support or resistance. Next, though, you might have some questions that I'm going to try to get out of the way now so you, I can save you the typing. You know, and unnecessary typing, you know, keep it nice and easy for you guys. You can sit back and, and hopefully I can read your mind. You know, what, what markets you might be wondering can trend lines be found in before we go further? So I, I, you might be wondering, you know, how useful is this information for me if I don't know much about trend lines? I don't really know, you know, what the availability of them. So we'll talk about what markets can trend lines be found on as well as what time frames. And you know, what assets, market, timeframes, all that good stuff. Where where are they? Where, you know, where are trend lines? And quite simply, this is an easy answer for me. And that's just because trend lines can be found on any market, in any time frame, on any asset. So the availability trend to the availability of trend lines to you as a trader is is it's limitless. We can find trend lines in any asset, at any market, at any time line, on any on any time frame. This means we can use trend lines in our daily trading. And that's the that's the golden excuse me that's the golden the you know the, the golden words that we want to hear as a traders something that we can use at any time something that we can add to our arsenal that is just just ready to be dynamically applied to any any form of trading that we have that's 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 excellent so this is the type of stuff that i personally get very excited about even if it does seem simplistic at first the availability of it is just it's what makes it, you know, it's what makes the, the bee's knees, if you will. But so here we are, we have some charts on. What I'm going to go ahead and go on, move into next here, guys, is I'm going to start finding some examples of what a trend line is, and then we're going to take it a little bit deeper. And obviously, like I said already, if you do have any questions as we go along, feel free to ask them because it'll allow me to direct what I'm talking about more to you. And that's at the end of the day, I'm not here for me, I'm here for you. So if you do have questions, feel free to ask them. But I'm going to start bouncing around these charts just a little bit, and I'm going to find some areas that I'd like to talk about. Now, once again, we already mentioned what a trend line is in the most basic sense. Now, we consider it an area. Here, let's see. We're going to mark these off, and then we're going to talk about it. So one thing at a time here, folks. Use this right here. I'm going to pay attention to this slope that I have marked off. Now, hopefully it's a little bit, I'm going to try to zoom this in a little bit for you so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to have to adjust that line though. Let's zoom this in, make it a little bit bigger. Everyone's eyes aren't always what they seem to be as we get older. So here we are. Now, a trend line. 
Okay, we know that from previous lessons that a support and resistance could be something if we look to the right of the chart, something like this. Okay, so an area of the market where we simply have come down to, it bounces up off of it, and it's just simply moving horizontal. Well, with a trend line, we add another dynamic into it in, in the sense that we are moving diagonal, but the same principles apply. A trend line is an area that price is going to move to and reject from. It's going to move to and it's going to reject from. It's going to move to and it's going to reject from. Now, the key number here, the key is how many times must price reach this this the similar slope, the similar slope of incline or the similar slope of decline before we can actually classify it as a trend line. And the key in the magic number for me is any time where we reach this price two or more times, we can now begin classifying it as a trend line. But realistically, many traders like to abide by the three or more rule, which means at least three hits before you start treating something as an active trend line and attempting to use it um, in, in consideration for executing positions. So in this example that I currently have marked off, depending on if you want to mark off the initial, which we really don't, I really don't want to use this example because this was, you know, this is kind of a ugly picture here, if you will. But if we were to mark this off as number one, we have a bounce where price has climbed to this area and rejected from it. Okay. After price fell down from this area, the overall direction of price was still bullish. We were still rising at time, so the market did come back up and reject again. And it isn't a coincidence that, when, what do you know, when the market did reach price later on, it maintained the slope, This the, it maintained the angle of incline that we had already. This didn't change. This is a static line in the sense that it is. it doesn't uh, it doesn't deviate at any point. It is one exact angle. We, all, we can call it a 45 degree angle. The exact angle doesn't necessarily matter, but the point is it didn't change at any, at any point or another. We don't have any weird lumps or bumps or anything funny here. So it is, it isn't a coincidence that as price came back up, it rejected around the same point with the deviation being how far we have moved to the right. And when we finally came back up to that level, the rejection point was very similar to the angle, maintaining the angle that we had on the initial. And then after rejecting yet again on the second time, we did come back up. And after working our way back up, you started noticing quite a bit more pressure and more rejections around this level, maintaining this angle. And even in the very last time, we can see with this little wick here, we worked our way up and kissed this level and rejected on off of it. So those of you that are you know, that have a little bit of trading experience already, I'm sure you can uh, more or less gauge the value in this and where we're going and how I plan on using them. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean some of these lines up and just draw a new one. There we are. And I'd like to talk about something else while we're on the subject, while I uh, while I'm still uh, still you know thinking of it before I move on and skip it. Does a trend line need to be measured at a candle body or can it be measured at a candle wick or does it have to be exact one way all the way through? Does it have to be a cookie cutter? If it's not this, it can't possibly be a trend line. And the answer to that is just like support and resistance lines in the way that we were talking to them, it is open to interpretation. However, the most widely accepted belief of what a trend line is, is going to be determined by a relative area, a relative uh, increase and decrease in price. We don't want to overcommit ourselves or over uh, emphasize a wick or a body and miss the bigger picture and miss what price is doing. If price is rejecting, just think of it as this, if price is rejecting from around this slope, around this angle of incline in this situation, if price is continuously rejecting in, in different forms, we don't really care what those different forms are, so to speak, as long as we can visibly see that price is rejecting. Because rejection can be shown in a number of ways. It can be showed by a candle body or it can be shown by a candle wick. We don't want to discriminate, so to speak. We want to be open to the idea that price is rejecting around this slope regardless of whether it be a candle body. As you can see here, we have a couple candles that technically have moved through just a tad to the line that I drew. And we have a couple wicks that did technically move through, but the vast majority of price has come to and pinged off of this angle of incline the entire way up. So once again, it is important to understand that we don't want to draw too much 
uh, uh, draw too much emphasis and discriminate on whether or not it has to be a candle body or a candle wick. Don't overcomplicate things. We want to be free flowing traders and we want to think of the market as nothing more than a displaying where price has risen to and where price has fallen from. And it's just paying attention to these rises and these falls, these the ebbs and flows of the market and paying attention to that angle and seeing if we can create some type of pattern out of it. And once we've identified a pattern, just like any other form of technical analysis trading, we're using this pattern to possibly anticipate what should happen again in the future. So just like anything else or any form of technical analysis trading, trend lines also apply. So we use this example to talk about some, and at the moment, like it, it doesn't appear to be, we don't, I don't think we have any other questions unless I have somehow missed them. But uh, once again, feel free to ask along as we go along. You do not have to, you do not have to, I'm not pushing you to, but don't be afraid if I, if I seem to be in the middle of something that you're going to mess me up because you won't, that's fine. We're going to move along here. I'm going to switch back out and possibly find another example because there are a couple things uh, that I would like to talk about. Actually, uh, we just showed an example of a trend line being drawn on the top of price, right? That's the This is the line that we were essentially just talking about. We were talking about trend lines being rejected, okay, and not finding support, but being rejected from a high price and falling down and from a high price and falling down. Now, can a trend line be drawn on the bottom of things? Absolutely. Absolutely. The same principles apply. We're just going to go ahead and reverse everything. So with trend lines being drawn on the bottom, let's go ahead and look what we have here. As we draw a trend line, we have now connected this point with this point. And this has now provided us with a future slope, which would be right here. To pay attention to how price is going to move and an expectation that price should be pivoting as it approaches this price. And what actually happened when price approached this price before finally breaking through? Well, look at this. We had a beautiful pivot location that could have been that we could have been prepared for after identifying the, the trend line based on these two swing lows here and here. And once again, over here, similar situation. Price came down and pinged exactly off of it. This is a beautiful example of the market respecting this angle of incline. And once again, we were able to do this by drawing from the bottom. So despite the initial example showing a trend line, uh, showing a the trend line, once again, is just a tool we're using to illustrate uh, a particular pattern that's going on in the market and allowing ourselves to get ahead of that pattern or what to expect because we're aware of what the market is doing. We can also draw a trend line on the bottom of prices just to do it in, with the goal of achieving the same thing. We want to identify what the market is doing, why it's doing it, and potentially be ready for it to do it again in the future. Now, it is important to note, just like horizontal support and resistance, that eventually we do expect these areas to break. But the more tests we have, and when I say the word tests, I'm talking about how many times the price has come down to this trend line. How many times it's come down to this trend line and changed directions? How many times has it validated our claims? The more it has validated our claims, the more weight and more validity we want to give to this area. But it should be noted that the more it happens, also, eventually, we know that there is an impending break to come. So once we've seen an area hold over and over and over again, technically speaking, that is a very, very strong area, but we also might want to be prepared for the impending break to possibly come thereafter. As you're trading, you'll find out you know, what types of trend lines you seem to find the most accuracy with and, and, and find the most success with and how many times has it touched and, and how much farther you can feel. You'll be able to gauge uh, how long the market anticipates riding on it. But once again, these are all things that come with experience and just practice doing this. And it's not something that you have to be, you don't have to be a fortune teller. You don't have to you know, know any type of weird voodoo to be able to do this. Um, the more you look at trend lines, the more you practice drawing them out on your chart, and the more you try to read them yourself, the more adept you'll become at finding them and having and being able to gauge correctly how long you expect them to last. There, I, there's no quick shortcut I can give you for it. Instead, I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you, please practice and please put them into practice as soon as possible. And the more you do, the better you will get 100%. Just remember the common principles that we're talking about here today and you will do wonderfully. I'm gonna move along here and look at some, look for some other wonderful examples here for us. Let's 
let's see. I am passing just just so you guys understand that trend lines are pretty much applicable to almost almost any trending market. Um, and I am passing I am passing examples up at the moment. So don't think that they're it's it's you know I'm gonna you're watching me go through you know hours and hours or days of data, and I'm not finding any. So this might not be interesting for you. But that's not the case. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm looking for things that are going to specifically cater to what I plan on saying and what I uh, plan on showing you guys. So there, there are quite a few opportunities that I have scrolled through. I'm just looking for those prime time 10 out of 10 examples uh, or at least 8 out of 10 so I can uh, give you guys a solid, a solid base here. Let's see here. This is a great example of a downward sloping trend line, and that's exactly what I'd like to see. So we just showed an example of a trend line position on top of price essentially being used as an area of resistance. While price was moving upwards, it continued to reject from a centralized degree of deviation. It's in a centralized, uh, or I'm sorry, a centralized angle of attack, if you will. Now, once again, that was price rising. That was with buyers in control of the market at that time. I also showed you a line position on the bottom of price treated as an area of support as price rose. Now, I'd like to show you an example of price situ or a trend line situated on the bottom of price while price is declining. So here we have price declining. And here we have a beautiful trend line. So now that I've drawn this line, it should be readily apparent what's going on here. We have an area where price initially came down. The first actual kiss of this trend line would actually have been right here, in my opinion. And then once again, we came down to it, and that would have been right here. And we kind of pivoted off of it. So came down to it once, had a small little bullish candle, little rally there. Came down again, had a second strong little rally here. And this time, this candle was a lot more pronounced worked away off of it, but eventually the sellers kicked in. There was too much selling pressure up top. The market wasn't ready to actually continue rising at this point. And then with all the selling going on, the price came down. And what do you know, as we push down towards very close to this trend line and at the intercept at the angle that we had already set off on these two first points. Remember, we're always looking for one and we're looking for, this is going to be difficult. That's supposed to be a two, not a Z. But, you know, at least you get a little bit of comedy out of this show. So, anywho, we have an area where we had our one point and our second point hit. And then as we worked on moving a little bit lower, we came down for our third touch, which would have been right here. Price worked its way towards the same angle of decline. Once again, the angle was set with the first two points. And then we take this point and everything onward. And we're giving ourselves an angle of attack. Now, this bottom line is just me outlining this. Okay, don't think that this bottom line is the trend line. I don't mean to confuse you. So with our two points touched, two points treated as an area of support, even though price is declining and the trend line is currently in this example being drawn on the bottom, we reach our third point. So as price is working its way back down here, because we watched it bounce off twice and we had already drawn our trend line, it is very possible that we could have been paying attention to price. And as we push closer to this line, we could have been looking to execute ourselves a, a, a buy, if you will, somewhere around this price location, looking to potentially steal uh, maybe a couple points here, a couple points there, in the expectation that price will have a temporary retracement period and a little scalp of the market if you will so we did look for an opportunity to jump in uh, or I'm sorry we could have looked for an opportunity to jump in had we identified this uh, during you know while this was happening live and then once again price did it did spike up it did get quite a lot higher than this location but it did end up coming right back down so this this would have represented touch number four for us so once again as price reached back down to this area despite price is falling it is very possible to use this as an, an area to possibly scalp a couple points on the market now I'm going to take this time to actually put a little bit of an aside in here here. I have mentioned that a trend line can be drawn to illustrate a market moving upward or a market moving downward, but a market moving upward, like we explained, we, cannot, we can draw a trend line on the top of price acting as an area of resistance, and we can also draw a trend line on the bottom of price acting as an area of support as the market moves upward. Now, you might be wondering, well, which is better? Generally speaking, Okay, both can be used, generally speaking, but it is important to understand the characteristics of what the market is doing, and in, 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 in you might understand what to expect out of each type of trend line. In this situation that we're currently looking at, because the market is actually moving downward, 
Okay, we're sloping, our angle is sloping downward. Because the market is sloping downward, mm -hmm. do you think it would be safer to look for buys in a downward sloping market, or would it be safer to look for sells in a downward sloping market? Well, quite simply, most traders will tell you that in a bearish market, we want to be looking to sell. We want to ride that momentum. We don't want to go against the grain. I'm just giving you examples of how a trader might have used these to possibly pull some points while going against the grain. Just like our other example, I'm not going to scroll back to it, but in an upward sloping market, oh goodness gracious, in an upward sloping market, we would, generally speaking, many traders will be more adept to use a line that is drawn underneath price, treating it as an area support as the momentum is already rising. They feel more confident about buying in a bullish market. So just to create no confusion, hopefully that uh, clears some things up that you're possibly wondering about. Uh, let's see what you got. Abdul says, can you can you give an example on how to confirm a breakout from the trend line? Absolutely. Absolutely. We actually that's actually where we're going next. You've uh, I, I like where your head's at. That is where we're going next. We're just getting through this one because we hadn't technically covered a downward slope yet. But yes, we will get there. We will get there. Don't worry. Um, but anywho, so taking a look at the market once again, uh, finishing up this example. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and redraw it so we can focus on it a little bit better. So here we had one, two, now the line is drawn. Once again, one and two touches, now the line is drawn, and we just continue this, tra this trajectory. We continue this angle of decline all the way down, and then we're just going to pay attention for price to come down to this level. So once again, as price came down, we found a nice little bounce opportunity here. Price came down again, we found a nice, a nice little bounce opportunity here, and once again, price came down, and once again, we found a nice little bounce opportunity here, and eventually the market actually just changed direction entirely. So this last little little chunk right here would have most likely been the last time that we used this trend line. But that is an example of a trend line on the bottom of price during a downward sloping market. Now, you, you might have saw me draw one on the top, and this is what it would look like. And this is going to go into, let's go ahead and get rid of the bottom one, actually. But this is going to go ahead and get into what you were talking about there, um, Abdul, uh, actually. We'll, we'll kind of feed into that. But here's an example of a trend line being, uh, or sorry, a trend line drawn on the tops of candles uh, in, in also a downward sloping market. Now, once again, this is the this is the more preferred line to be drawn and utilized in this type of a market by traders. Once again, it's the most preferred. Doesn't mean it's the only one, and it doesn't mean it's what has to work for you, or it's what, or it's what you have to do. You want to do what you feel comfortable with, and you want to make your own little trading plan. So here we have the same slope. We have the same, same essential uh, angle uh, that the market is declining at on the highs, even though before we were measuring the lows. Now, if we were to combine them together we would essentially be drawing ourselves a channel, but we're not going to get into that right now. But those of you that know what a channel is, I'm sure your head was already in the game. So taking a peek here, what do we have? Well, we have an area where price came up and rejected. Okay, all right, well, that's simple, all right? Then we notice price came up yet again and rejected. So at this point, we have now connected these two locations and we have just extended it outward, just like everything else, just like all the other examples we've already talked about, that is simply the continuation of a trend line. Now, the trend line is going to be that bottom line. Once again, I'm just using that top line to highlight the angle of what we're talking about. So by extending it outward, the next time price approached would, would have actually been right here. And because we already re we noticed it reject twice, and because we were able to draw our line at that point in time, it has made it very easy for us to expect what is going to happen once price reaches this line yet again. Well, here it goes price, up she goes, and boom, we had a rather rather abrupt and hard crash where we could have grabbed a couple points potentially. In that situation, it looks like we would have been looking to grab somewhere close to about 10 points, not bad, a little steal. So in that situation, folks, that is an example of a trend line being drawn on the type. Now, moving into what Abdul was talking about, and once again, if I'm butchering your name, I apologize. I'm terrible with name pronunciations. Don't take it personally. Don't take it to heart. I, I don't uh, I don't mean anything about it. You can call me whatever the hell you want to call me, and uh, and I won't be offended. So, <clears throat> but here we are. Here we are. No, you say it. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's I, I I am quite quite 
quite bad with name pronunciations. I don't know what it is. It's just been, it's always been one of my, uh, one of my, uh, one of my, um, my kryptonites, if you will. A little bit of a nerdy reference. But anyway, taking a look at this, we're in a situation here where we're going to bump into what Abdul was talking about. Uh, he said, well, what does a break look like? What does a break look like? Well, that's actually pretty easy. So this one's specifically for you, but obviously everyone else, please pay attention. So we already identified when drew out an area to show a trend line on the top of candles, uh, essentially an area functioning as resistance, sloping downward with price. Well, that's what we've got. So ideally what we're looking for in this situation is returns to this location to enter in for potential sales, right? Well, oops, what happens over here? What did I say about in the beginning? Well, what, at all levels, all levels, we do anticipate to break at some point or another. We don't expect anything to last forever because that's not how the market works. The market's dynamic. The market's constantly changing. So what works today and what works tomorrow might not work next week, okay, in terms of the market might not continue this exact trend. It likes to trend for periods of time, but it likes to change it up and trend quite differently. But anywho, so in this situation here, where we have price coming up to this level where we would have had one nice opportunity to possibly steal 10 points or so off of the market. But what do you know? On the fourth time, oh darn. If we had gone in here, it looks like she would not have treated us well. This is an area where price came up to. We had a very strong bullish candle here, almost a bullish engulfing in this situation where the candle came up, sat comfortably on this, and more or less just plowed right through it. This is what an this is an example. Let me redraw that again to try to clear this up for you. This right here is what a break looks like, Abdul. This right here. Let me see if I can do an ellipse. Let me turn this guy. There it is. I'm getting, getting, getting crafty with the shapes. Back to the line. So essentially, it's when price has closed, in our opinion. Now, once again, this is this is going to be you're going to hear people talk about oh well it's only it's anytime price moves above some people will say that but the widely the most widely accepted notion of when a level has broken whether it be support and resistance horizontally or a trend line is when price has a candle that has closed above or below the level in question so just like support and resistance abdul we have a candle here that has gone ahead and broken the trend the pattern is now different we had price moving downwards rejecting from central locations here and here and here and this candle is the one that no longer fits in the bunch we have a pretty sheep here we have a pretty sheep here we have a pretty sheep here and all of a sudden we have an ugly elephant over here candle that sticks out that is what a breaking candle looks like candle came up went through the trend line quite substantially not even by a little bit this is very clearly a change in trend at this point we should be on the lookout that price is potentially looking to rise this is a very strong bullish trigger and at this point if we were you know, willing to ride it in this long, we could counter losses had we been in for a sell and collected all of the gains that we had made previously and gotten ourselves out here treating it as essentially a stop loss based on you know, the powerful bullish trigger that we are now witnessing. So that is an example of what a breakout looks like. Does that make sense to you, Abdul? Mm -hmm. Good stuff, good stuff. I see we have another question in here as well. Sarah says, uh, I had a question after his, does the steepness of the angle, uh, I'm sorry, does the steepness of the angle of trend line matter for playing bounces? Yes, it does. That's actually a good question because I didn't talk about that yet. Let me see if I can find a live example before I answer that. Hold on. Uh, that's a hell of a ride. I don't know if I want to use that as an example. Hmm. <clears throat> By the way, uh, I have a ferocious ferocious animal, um, wild, wild beast. And she's a uh, guard dog. So uh, she's not actually a guard dog. She'd be, she'd run if she saw her shadow. But if you do hear her in the background, I do apologize. And she's usually rather quiet, but you know how animals are. Mm. 
Sarah says, what kind of dog? <laughs> uh, good question. Good question. I uh, adopted her from the pound, and as such, she is she's a mutt. She has mixed with many things. Just bear with me one second, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find you guys a great example. Um, and if I can't, I'll just explain it. So. Let's see if I can find a good example here for you. Abdul says, I am a cat person. Uh, I got to kick you out of the room now, buddy. I got to kick you out of the room. You just, you just lost it. Uh, uh. Uh, I can't find a picture that fits my cup of tea, so I'm just going to to explain it. So we're just going to go ahead and do that anyway. But when we're talking about trend lines, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this, and if I did already, I, I apologize for repeating myself, but we're essentially looking uh, at, at, at a measurement of how fast, how abruptly price is either rising or falling. Um, based on the frequency of how many times we're hitting the peak, how far apart there and how far we're rising in between um, can either be a good thing for the validity of our trend line or a bad thing. Now, if we have what I was looking for, and you might understand why this was kind of taking me a second. If we have an area of price, I, I still really want to find you a good example, and I'm just being entirely too picky uh, for this. All right, we're going to pretend is what we're going to do. We're going to pretend with much one of these that I like initially. Let's check. Switching time frames here. See if we can find something on the hourly. Perhaps. Uh, get a little bit closer. The hourly seem to be giving us a little bit more, but uh, okay. We'll use Exactly. So essentially what I'm getting at is the steeper the trend line, and this is just the general consensus. I was going to try to make it a lot more complicated than I needed to be, but the steeper the trend line, usually the less validity that we want to apply to them. Now, it's in that, and that applies to something going up or going down. The, the faster it's moving upwards, the more it, it's the volatility is and the more it's, it's likely to change. Um, you'll see things like this where we were initially moving upwards. And then all of a sudden the angle starts changing and it starts changing and it starts changing. Now I'm just getting crazy here drawing it. Obviously it's never going to possibly go backwards like a boomerang here, but that would be kind of cool if it did. But anyway, this is more or less what I'm talking about. As price spe speeds up, it's going to continue to continuously move farther and farther away from the trend line. And as such, your initial two measurements being point A and point B, you're not going to see them hit again. So in theory, this trend line that has been created is you know something that's going to be less likely to be hit or less likely to be used the faster price is rising. As we can see here, price did continue to pick up pace and it kind of worked its way off of the trend line. So ideally, our most successful trend lines are generally speaking going to be the, the most I want to say stable. Our most stable trend lines and generally most reliable and most hit trend lines are going to be the ones that happen in a in a, a little bit of a slower moving market or a little bit of a more consistent moving market rather than one that is bottom falling out or top flying off like a hot air balloon. So as we can see over here, we have a slight trend line, and this is a pretty beautiful example here. So we have a very slight trend line on the bottoms. Price is falling downward. If we were to use this on the underneath of price, we're going to go ahead and see A. Well, actually, we could actually even take that back a little bit farther. Uh, it's getting a little bit rough there, but here we go. 
So we can see what I'm what I should be able to see what I'm talking about here. And I actually did a pretty darn good job of drawing two uh, two straight lines there. But here we could consider this A. If we really wanted to get you know get frisky with it, we could have considered this point B and then just extended this darn thing all the way out ahead of time. And before we even saw any of this data from this point onward, pretend that we can't even see everything in this box. This box doesn't exist yet as we are considering ourselves live traders. We're just playing a game here. We're imagining what we would have done. So say we noticed this, we were quick and we said, hey, very strong bounce just happened at this location. This has my attention. And then the second time it happened, at this point, we're saying, okay, this is no longer a coincidence. I'm going to connect these two points and I'm going to extend them outwards and we're going to see what happens the next time price comes down to this location. Well, what would have happened had we have done that? And I can't I don't want to redraw that. I, I was going to zoom it in over here so you could see this a little bit better, but it's going to have, um, it'll kind of redraw everything. But what we had here was price worked its way down and being followed by this white line. And we pinged up off of this location as we cruise closer to our, in, our intercept of this angle of deviation yet again. So as this angle of decline happened, as price worked its way back down to it, this would have been the third time. Even though it was quite farther away, we noticed a little bit of time actually passed. The market said, okay, we're the market's always continuously looking for the next point of interest. The next, Everyone's always looking for a reason to buy or a reason to sell. That's really all trading comes down to is everyone's looking for an excuse to buy or an excuse to sell and why they're, you know, and they believe their excuse is better than everyone else's excuse. So people anticipated this enough so that they expected price to bounce based on how it did it in the, in the past. And as a result, people then made it happen again in the future. People started buying as price got closer to this location and all of that added buying ended up turning price around. Now, once it happened the third time, you better believe it that price is most likely going to look for uh, a similar occurrence if it does come down a fourth time because at this point we now have a triple a three time tested area um, a three time tested trend line so as we follow price a little bit to the right and work away sideways we started coming down yet again and what do you know bink we bounced right off of this and we found a nice comfortable rally and this one actually picked up quite a lot of speed worked our way all the way up here seller stepped in yet again sent it right back down and what do you know here we go again bink bounce right up off of this line here we are worked our way back down to it and hey what do you know bounce our way right off of this line and we our way back down to it and bink bounce our way off of this line and worked our way up off of it this is a great example of a trend line uh so says those trend lines look really good on there tons of hit and yes yeah, yes 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 this is a great that's actually where i was going with this this is a great example of a trend line um just in any sense and any and any way you want to talk about a trend line. We have a nice smooth angle. We don't have an angle like this. We don't have an angle like this. We don't have an angle like this. It doesn't look like we're, you know, we're, we're riding the world's steepest roller coaster in the world, and that's not what we want. We want a nice smooth angle for more likely hits and more uh, uh, st a stronger expectation of the bounce to happen once we do hit, if that makes sense. Um, uh, Sarah says that's exactly what I want to know. Good, good. Anywho, so that's a good example of what we were looking at there. But anywho, and obviously that applies, the inverse of that applies. Uh, moving ourselves around in, in terms of uh, if we were to do this on the top of price moving upwards or on the top of price moving downwards, all of these things apply. It's all... Uh, one size fits all, if you will. A trend line is a trend line is a trend line, regardless of angle, regardless, or, well, not regardless of angle, I shouldn't say that, regardless of it going up or down or being located on the top or bottom of price. Now, as we were just talking about, the angle can kind of scare us away from uh, our expected reliability of it. If the angle is extremely steep, we tend to see reliability go down a little bit, or we tend to see less hits. And the more hits we have, generally, the more we consider something reliable. So therefore, if an angle is really steep and we expect to see less hits, then therefore, we must classify it as less reliable. But anywho, I'm just connecting some of those lines. Kind of fun to draw happy face here anywho um uh we had another question here uh let's see what we've got uh sarah says i figured the steepness would make it probably less likely to hit multiple times that is correct and that's exactly what we were talking about uh and sarah said i had another question as well is there a way to help filter out false breakouts all right, so we're going to go back to talking about breakouts. We had mentioned breakouts a little bit before, but let's see what we can do here. I'll find some live examples for you. Zoom it in a little bit more ahead of time so we can see. 
No, zoom out for now. I'm going to zoom back in. False breakouts. Let's look for an example of a false breakout. Sarah says, I heard in the lessons about volume, which means I imagine Sarah's is saying, uh, attempting to use, um, you know, use another indicator to measure uh, the strength of a move and, and, and whether you actually expect it to be breaking or not. And yes, that is absolutely possible. Um, I'm trying to find a visual example, keeping it simple here. I'm going to switch it back to 15 minute because I know I saw some good 15 minute false breakouts as I was moving the charts around. Just to use as an example, the charts are looking a little bit goofy over there, but let's see. Shall we? That's the initial example that we use. Once again, these are not hard to find. Well, you'll notice them in real time, and it's just it's just on the spot going backwards historically. I'm just trying to find a perfect example for you guys. Um, so it, it makes it a little bit more um, readily accessible to you. Just like anything else with trading, you're not always going to have a trend line available to you. Um, they can be found in any they can be found in any time on you know in, on any market, in any asset, on any time frame. But that doesn't mean there's going to be one every minute of every day on every asset of every market of every time frame. Uh, just like anything else, the more we know, the more we have available to us, and the more we'll be able to properly identify or be ahead of the curve when we notice those things. If we don't know what a trend line is or how to use them or how to spot one when they happen, then it's just going to be one more thing that we're potentially missing out on. So the more we know, the more that we do not miss out on. So. Once again, it's just there's always a lot of value in, in understanding anything that uh, is considered to be uh, you know such a core principle of technical analysis and trading. Um, we could sort of use that. We're, let's use this. Um, it's not the best example in the world, but we're going to use this kind of as doing more or less what I'm talking about. So we're going to go ahead and draw here. Nope. All right. So what I've done is I went ahead and drew during a somewhat bullish period of the market. If you know, if you if you can't understand why I'm saying a somewhat bullish period, excuse me, a somewhat bullish period of the market. Uh, what do we look at price in, in this centralized channel that I've gone ahead and drawn? We see price is mostly working its way higher, and then from point A down here to point B up here we have increased. That's why I'm talking about bullish. But nonetheless, let's just focus on this for now. So what do we have? Well, if we were to consider this point one, right, we were to consider this point one the first time that the market had moved its way up, okay, moved its way up and rejected. So this is what happened. Price came down, worked its way up, and pinged off of it and rejected. I'm just going to draw right through candles. This might make it actually a little bit easier. Probably should have done this to begin with. Um, ooh, that's ugly. It's like my ex-wife. All right, so moving on higher, we have another situation where price worked its way up and went ahead and crashed on down. Price then worked its way up and went ahead and crashed its way on down. Now, what I want to pay attention to is not this point, okay, because arguably this would be A and B right here. So here we would have A and here we would have B. In this situation, this is where we would have gone ahead and drawn ourselves and extended the trend line outward, which means this would have been right here. Right, we're going to go ahead and do our beautiful little ellipse. Think. This would have represented the, the quote unquote false breakout. Uh, and this is what it looks like visually. Now, Sarah was talking about um, other things like using a volume indicator to potentially measure a false breakout. Uh, I believe that's where she was going with that. And yes, that is also possible. We're not going to cover that today because we're not talking about those types of indicators at the moment. But if you are interested in that, please navigate over to our lessons. 
and you will find all kinds of information. We have a lesson on just about everything. Our education here is just phenomenal. It's very, very good. But we have how to use uh, multiple, multiple types of indicators and how you can apply them if you want to get ahead of the game. But I'm sure in a future webinar, we will be covering that as well. But anyway, so what is a what is a false breakout look like simply just from the technical analysis? Hey, let's look at this uh, perspective. Well, here we have a situation where once again, A, B, so we extend outwards and this, oh, wow, we didn't need to do that one. Let me go ahead and just back that right up. But we extend ourselves outwards. We have our line already drawn. I went ahead and put a circle around where we have a false breakout. Now, what is a false breakout? It's, an, it's where price has moved above where it should have theoretically turned. But once again, we just gave it a little bit of time. We want to go ahead and consider a true breakout when candles, like I said earlier, we consider a true breakout when a candle actually closes comfortably above. Once again, you'll notice that a little bit of this is open to interpretation, and you're going to use you're going to hit use your own you're going to find your own level of uh, of, of strictness. You're going to find your own level of um, you know how 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 tight do I want to be? How nitty gritty do I want to be with this? And some people are a little bit looser. Some people are a little bit more tight. Some people are more conservative. Some are more aggressive. So, but the the middle of the road view, in my opinion, is simply determining a break as a time when candles have closed above the location in which you are questioning as whether it's broken. And which one it has closed above, and the more the 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 more distance that it has closed above, the harder and more uh, the more confirmation we give to that breakout. So in this situation, we had, which is displayed to us by price, because we can see the wick. It's not a body. It's just the wick or the shadow, however you refer to it, or the tail. It's all synonymous. We have price being displayed as moving outside of this line, but it didn't last long. How do I know it didn't last long? Because these are 15-minute candles that we're currently looking at, and it didn't even close anywhere above it. It only had a temporary spike and moved itself back up underneath, and when the time actually came down to it, it was all the way down here, but it did end up closing as a bearish-bodied candle. Uh, my white lines might be hiding the visibility of that, but this is an example of a false breakout. Just because we saw price temporarily spike out of that doesn't mean that I am all of a sudden going to say, oh, it's broken, I am done with it. Now, it does cause my alert level to rise, See if we can. I'm going to change my, uh, my my stuff back to a light. So when we have this happen right here, okay, that does cause me to start paying attention a little bit further. But I do not consider it a breakout. And in my mind, guess what? This line is continuing on and on and on and on all the way back up to the Death Star. So we're going to go ahead and just send this thing all the way. We're going to send it all the way. Why? Because we haven't actually considered it broken yet. Now that is does it does look a little bit ridiculous going this far, you know, beyond the point because. You know, hindsight's 2020, and you can see that it never actually bounced off of it again. But that doesn't make it any less true. Had price actually worked its way up here, you know, maybe at this point here, I would still be expecting price to reject. Had it worked its way over here, I would still be expecting price to reject at that point. You know, say one, you know, goofy over here, and we created a bunch of ends like McDonald's, and then we worked our way back up. Hey, I would still be expecting price to reject. So this is an example, once again, right here, of what. A false breakout looks like on the most simplistic sense. Other than that, uh, Sarah says, so people just buy and get caught at the top. In the situation that uh, I think she's saying, if somebody were to treat this as a breakout in anticipation of the break, they went ahead and bought here. Whoops. Gosh darn it. I don't mean to be drawing all these circles. Hold on. I, uh, I'm clumsy with these uh, lines sometimes. Let's just draw this guy out again. Think. All right. All right. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and draw the ellipse. Talk about this one more time. All right. So Sarah says, so people just buy and get caught at the top. And she, I think what she's talking about here is she said, how should we know when to get out if we get caught buying on the break and ends underneath? So she's saying, okay, well, say I was looking to play a breakout. Say I was looking to play a breakout. And that's something we can do too. I haven't put a lot of emphasis on that during this webinar because we just were focusing on how to utilize the trend lines, not how to utilize the trend lines when they fail. But that is something that we should probably talk about. You'll notice just like an area of support or resistance when price finally has a break. And I don't need to explain what a break is because we already talked about that. It's when a candle closes above, right, in our definition. 
Well, that's generally treated in this situation where we have price working its way upwards, but it's stuck underneath the centralized location. If price were actually to close up here, say it actually closed at this location, that is a break. That is a deviation from the set pattern of price rejecting from this angle all the way up. That in this situation, because it is price closing higher, it is increasing the angle instead of going perfectly up like this. Now we would start being going like this and then maybe like this and then maybe like this just straight up to the moon. That is an example of bullish pressure. That's a bullish trigger. So what some people do, what Sarah's talking about, is they say, hey, let's go ahead and look for a buy right here because we're expecting this to come thereafter. We're, we're, we notice a change in the market that the buying pressure has picked up, and we're trying to take advantage of that. So they're using this as an opportunity to buy. So what happens if we do that? And, oh, we bought a little early. We didn't wait for the candle to close. Like Chris said, candle didn't close, but I'm in for a buy right here. Okay, uh, what do I do in the event that price actually ends up closing back underneath like it did, and now we're stuck back underneath the trend line? The minute that we realize that we're stuck back underneath this trend line, that price is actually closed underneath, and we're stuck back up underneath this trend line, usually, in my opinion, is it, this is going to be the time where I personally am saying, okay, I want to get out of the market, I, I, or I want to get out of my buying position at this point because I may have made an early read. That is, there's an awful lot of white lines going on there. There we go. But so say we got in here once again, where I'm draw, I've drawn the horizontal line. We got in for the buy with anticipation for price to rise, but actually what price did was it snapped back up underneath. So we could have I, a, either set ourselves a stop loss that was some level below this line and just had it automatically bounce us out, hopefully, or we could just monitor it manually and say, okay, price actually closed back up underneath, and once again, we came back into it. And at this point right here, if we wanted to be really cautious about canceling this buy, we didn't want to really give up on our buy just yet. At this point, there is no chance that I am actually going to be continuing holding on to this buy after seeing another comfortable rejection. Now, you might not be able to see it too, too well, but what happened was after we closed underneath, we had a couple actually examples of rejection. This tiny little doji candle here actually came up, kissed the line, was unable to get through. Then we had a powerful bullish candle that came up, got stuck on the line, didn't go through even a little bit, and then we were followed at this point by a powerful bear. At this powerful bear, at this point, I'm I, I'm I, I am already convinced that uh, that the tr that I have. Even though I was already convinced I had made a mistake, this kind of seals it in the coffin and says, hey, put the ego aside. Uh, you bought a little early. You bought before it actually showed a break, and now it's continuing to respect the trend line. And if it's continuing to respect the trend line and I'm in up here for a buy, chances are I don't want to uh, ride out the painful journey that might happen should price fall however far it may fall down here. Now, in this situation, it really didn't fall too, too far. But I don't want to get stuck working my way farther and farther off of this line and say the market at this point just says it's going to start switching bearishly and doesn't ever want to come back. And I'm just stuck somewhere up here in a very painful trade having have hope for the best. So Sarah says, I see. Great. Thanks. A great explanation. Good stuff. Um, other than that, folks, uh, let's see. It is currently 8 o'clock. We've been running for an hour, over an hour now, which is that's kind of exciting. Um, if you have any questions at all, definitely feel free to type them up. Um, I, Abdul had some great questions today. Sarah had some great questions today. Uh, hopefully, you're able to uh, learn from their questions. And if you have any more questions, Abdul, definitely feel free to type them out. Uh, he says that was very helpful. Awesome. Good, 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 good. That's what I like hearing, buddy. Thank you very much. And if you have any other questions, Abdul, definitely feel free to ask them. But don't panic either. If you can't remember a question, and it comes to you in the in your future trading, or it comes to you, you know, say tomorrow or another. We're we're always available for contact, obviously. But what is what is even more exciting is all of those lessons that I was already talking about. We have some pre-recorded lessons that will. Uh, uh, Sarah says I'll be doing one of those mentor sessions soon. Yes, you can schedule a private mentoring session. You can go back and look at the private lessons. You, you, there's 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 a number of. Uh, faculties available for you to utilize, and I strongly encourage that you do. But the ones that I definitely stress the most, and I feel that you'll have the, um, you, you'll enjoy the most, um, Abdul, I think, is if you do check out a lot, I don't even know how many lessons we have at this point. Uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. That's it's it's. We could use other numbers for to be funny, but it's a lot. And those the the lessons that I'm talking about are pre-recorded lessons covering a million different topics, uh, covering uh, not theoretically, but covering different different strategies, uh, different indicators. There's a lot from beginner to advanced. There's a ton of stuff, uh, and you will find everything that we talk about in here. 
uh, generally has been something that we have already covered in some of those lessons. So if you do leave and you say, hey, you know, I want to touch off on this, you can always go to one of those pre-recorded lessons as well. Uh, and, and I would recommend that as your second choice. And then if you're still confused, I would definitely recommend saying, reaching out to us and say, hey, can you help me out with this? Or can we do this? Or can we do that? And the answer will always be yes. It'll just you know, schedule time and we'll make it happen. But uh, Abdul says, I see great, good stuff. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, at this point, guys, if you don't have any other questions, then I think I will be bidding you guys adieu and wishing you guys best of luck trading the markets if you are trading them now. Um, or if you're just going to wait till tomorrow and you're going to trade them in the morning, well, then best of luck tomorrow trading them as well. Uh, Abdul says, thank you very much, Chris. Sarah says, okay, have a good night. Absolutely. Um, I believe I have, let's see here, I didn't need to pull that one up. Let's see. Well, I suppose I should have had this on the screen while I was saying all of that stuff, but you know, sometimes I'm I'm like a monkey with a football, but I'm not going to finish that phrase. Um, we have it says if you have any further questions or you wish to go further in depth, please feel free to contact one of our mentors in your dashboard area today. Like I said, we already kind of covered that. So, um, but it has been a pleasure, guys. As always, thank you for joining me for another wonderful webinar, and it was a pleasure meeting some of you. And, and I, uh, I, it was nice talking with with all of you, Abdul, Sarah, and all, everyone, anyone else that was asking any questions. It's always fun. It makes it a lot more enjoyable for me when I feel like I have someone to communicate with instead of just a silent room. So thank you, thank you if you did type. I do appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. And if you did it, hopefully, uh, or if it's something you already knew, hopefully it just refreshed it and kind of, you know, maybe corrected any, 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 um, any, any gray areas that you had. But I do appreciate it, guys. I wish you all the best of luck in the market. And once again, guys, just because this is buy, it isn't buy for good. It is just buy for now. We are always available for, con available for contact. Just reach out to us at earntotrade.com. You guys know the drill. It has been a pleasure, though. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Abdul says, all right, have a good day, guys. Thank you very much. I will be closing us down now, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It has been a pleasure, and I will see all of you and talk to all of you real soon. Like I said, please check out those pre-recorded lessons. I can't tell you how valuable they are. Have a wonderful Monday night, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow. Best of luck killing the markets tomorrow on Tuesday, guys. See you soon.